right on the back of uh, what, what you know came through on that lecture last night, perhaps staying with Africa Month, we highlight the continent's potential and growth. This is urbanization and development also comes to the fore. The speed of urbanization has increased with 40% of Africa's total population living in cities. It is the fastest rate of urbanization globally. And as income opportunities expand, so does the increase in demand for services, transport, housing, as well as education as well. But creating sustainable solutions for cities to keep up whilst protecting the environment for future generations is also going to be key. Perhaps for more, we are joined by Danga Muwowo, South African Cities Network Programme manager to chat a little bit more on the rapid rate of urbanization in African cities and chartering the way forward. A very good afternoon to you, Danga. Thank you for joining us here on the ACBC. Thank you for having me. Let's look at urbanization and the stats and figures surrounding, uh, we know what's come out on the continent. Why is African urbanization and the opportunity perhaps it represents to the continent so relevant to our Africa Day celebrations here in, in South Africa? Uh, the question. I mean, I think it, what it uh, really represents is that this uh, 21st uh, century really is going to be the African century in terms of uh, population growth and the opportunities represented. You said tremendous growth in Africa's uh, urban population. So globally, there'll be massive increases in population, but the majority of that increase in urban areas will be in African cities. So, for example, a city like Lagos, which is now about 20 million population is forecast possibly that by the uh, 20, you know, in 50 years time, it could be as much as 100 million people. A city like Blanta in Malawi, where I'm from, um, could be a population now of around 5 million, could be as big as New York, which is around 10 million, also by the end of the century. So really an opportunity for achieving sustainable development because the majority of our populations will be actually in cities. And as you know, we had, first of all, the Millennium Development Goals, but they've been subsequently added to by the, uh, the sustainable development goals. And uh, clearly achieving those sustainable development goals will require an urban focus and achieving those will take place in our cities. Mm. Well, speaking of sustainability, the rapid rate of urbanization in African cities is, is obviously happening at the fastest pace globally. And, you know, you also have the view that it presents an opportunity for South Africa, perhaps even across the continent, to build great cities. Perhaps you could tell us, you know, what it will take to turn this challenge into an opportunity to create these great cities, because we also have to look at the issue of social well-being and sustainability going forward for future generations. Well, thank, yes, I think that's a, a very critical question, because uh, that urbanization um, needs to be uh, taken into account in terms of the planning uh, that city planners do for cities. Mm -hmm. And by uh, introducing that topic, I mean, we need to look at the background to planning. So in many of our cities, uh, at least where they were, they were colonized, um, planning uh, proceeded on a model which was quite um, car-centric, uh, spaced out in many areas. I mean, you look at uh, the, the space of cities because the assumption was, and at that time, that people who were essentially the colonizers were able to drive to and from. And so there wasn't a focus on the compact cities in which it's very close for uh, between distances between where people work and where they live and so that is the ideal and so we want uh, city planners to take that into account so for example our urban policy in south africa the integrated urban development uh, framework calls for the densification of our cities to counteract the kind of sprawl and indeed the spatial dislocations of apartheid which we all know about but even looking at the other cities on the continent and the uh, cities are tending to sprawl uh, another challenge of course is that much of the new uh, populations coming into cities end up living in slums and in formal settlements. So up to 60 to 70 percent of Africa's uh, urban population is actually living in slums, which clearly is uh, an unacceptable situation in the sense that those populations do not have access to uh, clean water, do not necessarily always have access to electricity, and the kind of infrastructure that is required in order for us to take advantage of what we call this urban dividend. So okay. clearly moving forward, our planners, both in South African cities but across the continent, need to take into account the urbanization, which typically takes place in informal settlements. So they need to be able to anticipate um, this kind of growth. And um, so we call that thinking in terms of not just sustainability, which is to say that we're you know, managing our resources in a sustainable way, but also that cities need to bake in resilience into their planning. And by resilience, we mean the ability to uh, anticipate, to adapt, uh, and to also take into account in their planning processes, the kind of uh, impacts and, and changes and, and across the board, so from urbanization to climate change to 
um, you know, natural disasters to war even perhaps, um, the, these things that uh, could affect uh, cities' development trajectory. And by, uh, by being focused on resilience then, we're able to anticipate and take into account the massive changes that will be taking place in our urban areas. Okay, so speaking about resilience and changes, I mean, you, you're also speaking about urban planning that needs to transform and that cities perhaps also need to be at the forefront of, of urban development. And, and I wonder if you could elaborate how, you know, this needs to play out. I'm asking you this because obviously as we shine a spotlight on what's happening in South Africa, different factors and scenarios have come to the fore. Uh, we've seen the destruction witnessed in different places in Guazulu Natal and the Eastern Cape. And so I also wonder what the role of climate change in recent weeks, you know, has been in, in, in the escalation of uh, some of the issues we're experiencing in, in some of the uh, cities in Africa. Well, yes, I think and you mentioned climate change. I mean, this is clearly going to be an issue which uh, affects us and, and if anything needed focusing our minds, clearly the tragedy that's taken place in KwaZulu-Natal is an indicator of that. And in fact, by all accounts, the effects of climate change are experienced and going to be experienced most by the most vulnerable and the poorest people across the world. So the rich countries will always be sorted, but the immediate impacts will be felt by um, the poorest and most vulnerable people. And what that tells us, therefore, is that particularly in cities, and we've been speaking about our cities, is that we need to take uh, resilience into account. And we need to be able to anticipate the fact that these uh, events, which used to be you know, once in a lifetime kind of events, are going to be much more frequent, whether it's drought, flooding, um, excessive heat, uh, excessive cold. These are things which are going to affect cities. And uh, the way in which we can account for that and what we call for in our State of Cities report, which we produce every five years and just came out uh, this um, uh, this month, is mm -hmm. we say well, a cooperative governance and an all of society approach. So within the South African context by cooperative governance, we understand that to mean a, a really a strong uh, a co equal and a, a mutually reciprocal relationship between three spheres of government, so national government, provincial government and local government, but also the all of society approach. So one of the things that you'll have seen in response to the crises was civil society organizations uh, sprung into the gap. Uh, we all know about Gift of the Givers and the tremendous work they do across the country, but also across the globe. They're an exemplar for a civil society organization that assists people in need. And the reason for this, and it's not strange, is that uh, we anticipate also, and our, our uh, visionaries who laid out local government white paper in 1998, so that the state can't do everything. There are certain okay. things that society organizations, faith-based -faith organizations, church organizations do. And in fact, what for society to advance and to achieve the goals that we would like to see, the sustainable development goals, as well as ensuring that our, uh, we do not leave vulnerable populations behind, we include them in growth, and we also support them with a safety net when they don't have it, is to ensure that civil society and that the whole of society is brought in to the uh, societal, almost the societal vision that we have. So the private sector, um, academics, uh, think tanks like ourselves, as well as uh, those organizations I've just mentioned. Well, you speak about the South African Cities Network, uh, the, the State of Cities report, which is obviously released, and, and that whole of government and all society approach. And just quickly in passing, um, perhaps as we, as, we, as we look at that approach, what do you base you know, the approach going forward on? And I ask you this just because there's been a growing pattern of urban uh, settlements and continued housing issues in, in, in Africa. And uh, with that fastest urbanization rate, you know, by 2050, how do we begin to reimagine what's possible going forward? Well, I think, uh, as, I, as I said, I mean, uh, developmental local government, which uh, we hold to be dear in South Africa, is this idea that actually development visions should come from, and indeed the desired uh, development should be based on what the people want. So number one is democratic. Uh, number two is participatory. And in South Africa, our integrated um, development plans are the five-year plans that um, communities um, and reflect the wishes and the desires of communities. I mean, we're still at a point where perhaps not to the extent that we'd like to see that being the case. And in some cases, uh, clearly it's the professionals within municipal administrations who come up with many of those plans and definitely things like infrastructure and so on require specialist input. But the specific developmental projects that communities want should be, and the vision is that they should be reflected in those integrated development plans, as well as longer term plans. So for example, um, growth and development strategies over a long term, because you need to think, and this returns back to that point I was making earlier, which is that you really need to think long term. 
just thinking in terms of five-year cycles is, is, of course, useful for budgeting and, and um, uh, you know, supply chain management processes in terms of specific projects. But you need to think long-term about those kind of growth and population that we spoke about earlier, where that growth is going to occur, the kinds of people who will need assistance, but okay. also important the kind of revenue that we'll be able to raise from uh, city residents in order to be able to meet those services. So local government is uh, very much dependent on own revenue in the form of property rates. So across the world, property rates okay. are a source of revenue for local governments, but also getting a, a surcharge on electricity and water sales to uh, consumers of those services within cities. So it's very important also, and this relates again to the social plan pipes and all of society coming together, is that we have to pay our municipal bills to make sure that cities are indeed able to deliver services to the populations that need them, and particularly the vulnerable populations who don't have access to them and we are constitutionally mandated to. Danga, I want to thank you very much for your time. Danga Mubowo, South African Cities Network Program Manager, joining us for chat on uh, the rapid rate of urbanization, African cities perhaps chartering the way forward. This came to the fore as, uh, you know, the world over, particularly us here on the continent, obviously uh, celebrated and commemorated, observed, in fact, Africa Day, which uh, transpired on the 25th of May 2020.